Today we are marking the first anniversary of the first pandemic lockdown. Welcome to the short commemoration. We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. As we gather here on this first anniversary of lockdown, we come to pray for all in this cathedral and community, city and county, country and world, who have been affected and touched by the COVID pandemic. We remember those who have lost members of their families or their friends, those who served others in the National Health Service and care homes, emergency services and workers who assisted with the immediate tasks of coping with the loss of lives, and the millions of volunteers and helpers who have enabled God's love to be made known to neighbours and those nearby. We also hold before God the crisis and opportunities that have arisen as our lives have been changed forever. In reflecting on the moments that have touched and moved us, we now look forward to the future with faith and confidence, learning lessons from what we have experienced and discovered, which will shape the journey that lies ahead of us. And so let us pray. Lord God, the maker and redeemer of all. As we come before you in thanksgiving for the gift of health and life, we grieve for the thousands who have died. Comfort us with your presence, sustain us with the hope of your kingdom, and give us grace to live our lives well through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. A candle of remembrance. Gracious God, as we remember before you the thousands who have died, surround us and all who mourn with your strong compassion. Be gentle with us in our grief and protect us from despair and give us grace to persevere and face the future with hope in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. What an unusual anniversary, certainly something unique in my time, a year since the start of the first lockdown. And for those of you shielding like me, a challenging time, excluded from those we love, our friends and our way of life. For others, of course, it's been a far more challenging time, losing loved ones, being hospitalized, and sometimes taking a very long time to recover. It has, of course, been a time for reflection, and I must pay tribute not only to those who served in the front line in hospitals and in care homes, but also those who kept the supermarkets open, the supply of basic services, water, gas and electricity, the police who protect us and other emergency services who serve us so diligently. It would be remiss to ignore the armed forces who once again have risked their lives for their countrymen and women local authority workers, from those who administer to those who provide services. For most of us, that part of our lives has not been disrupted and we must be thankful to them and to our local leaders who have demonstrated real leadership. The voluntary sector and volunteering has been another real highlight of the pandemic, sometimes inspiring and at all times humbling. Where would so many millions be without food banks, for instance? 
The pandemic has brought out the very best in people, but it has also highlighted the thoughtless and the ignorant, those who only care for themselves and hold no responsibility for anyone else. But there is hope, particularly in the form of vaccines that are now being run out nationwide. Yes, it has been a challenging year, but it's also been an inspiring year. And I cannot close without thanking the remarkable scientists and technicians working behind the scenes who I doubt if any of us will ever meet, but we owe our lives to them and our future. One year on from the day that lockdown was first introduced, this is a moment to pause and reflect on the loss that so many have suffered since. So many people have lost their husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, friends and neighbours and work colleagues. And sadly, grieving, mourning and providing comfort has been so much harder during these times with restrictions on funeral gatherings and on people coming together. However, our families and communities in Greater Manchester have been there for each other and have provided much needed support over the last 12 months. On behalf of everyone in Greater Manchester, I want to thank our public services, our businesses, our voluntary community and faith organisations who've made a massive contribution and provided support to those who grieve, those who suffer and everybody who has been harmed by the pandemic. Through working together and supporting each other, our communities in Greater Manchester have once again shown that they will always look out for each other. And it is from that that we can take hope on this anniversary. We have been unexpectedly uprooted from what was our normal way of life, from our families and friends, from the routines we took for granted and from life's expectations. We've experienced deep anxiety and uncertainty, but we've also witnessed extraordinary solidarity and altruism. And we have seen what it can mean to be part of a caring, collaborative community. We've recognised what now we need to change in order to create a better normal. There will be new beginnings and we have an opportunity that we must grasp with determination. We must look to the edges and fulfil our lives by embracing those who exist in the margins of society. The candle of renewal is flickering into life. Let's gently shield it with our hands and nurture the flame of the future. And in the words of Pope Francis, this is a time to see. It's a time to choose and it's a time to act. Let's dream of a better world. The Book of Lamentations begins with the Hebrew word Eicha, which is also the Hebrew name of the book. This word sums up the pain felt during the pandemic. The word means how, but it has a sense of a howl or a cry. Eicha. The book begins, Eicha. Lonely sits the city once great with people. She that was great among nations has become like a widow. Bitterly she weeps in the night, her cheek wet with tears. There is none to comfort all of her friends. Eicha is a lament, personally and collectively, and our grief is both deep and broad, personal and public. Focusing on this book reminds me, as my tradition does again and again, that there have been moments of crisis from the beginning of time. There is nothing new under the sun. What perseveres is hope and the human spirit to survive and thrive and connect and care no matter what. Out of the pandemic, we will, as a sacred act, drag all the good we can from this time and turn more strongly into community and life. As the book ends, return our days and make them as old, make them anew. Hashivenu, let's return together. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 
As we have been reminded time and time again during this pandemic, we face a change in our lives and society around us that we have never faced in most of our lifetimes. In the face of adversity, we, tame, we came together in ways which we could never have imagined. Despite restrictions of the kind we had never faced, we found ways to come together and support one another in hardship and grief. Our lives have become interdependent at a time when some were calling for isolationism. The message from my faith tells us not to despair and let fear and anxiety overcome you. It encourages us all to carry hope with expectancy and take positive action with it. The Holy Quran says, verily with hardship comes ease. Verily with hardship comes ease. The hope and belief generated in the actions of so many people from every faith and beyond gives us the once in a lifetime opportunity to build a better future for us all. For this, we must all take positive action, however small, so we can rebuild together with all for better times that are surely to come. Namaste. Lockdown seems longer than one year for us. Everybody went through anxiety, depression, and loneliness. But we learned a lot. We connected with our friends, family, grandchildren, even seniors through either WhatsApp or Zoom. And just by looking at their face, smiling face, talking, they feel uplifted. So we do prayer like him in singing, talking. So before we sing, we do a Gayatri mantra, which is in Sanskrit. It goes like this. Om Bhur Bhubha Swaha Tassabitur Bare Niyam Bhargo Devashadhi Mahi Dhiyo Onaha Prachodaya which uplifts physically, spiritually and socially. Namaste. Hello, my name is Sukhbir Singh, a community servant, part of the Sikh community in Manchester. The last 12 months have been most challenging for us all, as you remember the first anniversary of the pandemic. We all know of someone who has lost their life to COVID. Many more have become seriously ill and everyone's life will have been touched in a negative way. We stand united together for our prayers, for the people of our great city and wider world community. As part of the daily Sikh prayer, the Ardas, we recite Nanik Naam Jardi Kala Tere Pani Sarbata Pala. Sikhs pray every day and ask God for the well being of humanity, prosperity for everyone in the worldwide community, global peace for all. This morning, I heard some great news. One of my neighbors was celebrating the birth of their first grandchild. Good news indeed in these dark times. With the arrival of the vaccine, I'm hopeful of a better and better future. A few years ago, the international relief agency Christian Aid popularised the slogan We Believe in Life Before Death. It served as a telling reminder that religion and belief are not simply focused upon providing hope after death, but about how we live well and enable others to live well here and now. The Covid pandemic has contributed directly to the loss of well over 100,000 lives in the UK in the last 12 months since lockdown began. 
we mourn with all who've lost loved ones. But the impact on human lives and livelihoods has not been confined to the mortality figures. There is huge personal cost borne by those afflicted by what is now called long Covid. There's also the cost borne by those whose jobs have disappeared, whose education has been interrupted, or whose mental health is now seriously degraded after months of lockdown. The task of helping Manchester recover from Covid will not end when the final prayer is said over the body of the last victim. It will remain with us, for all people of faith to play their part, alongside our civic and other agencies. It's a task already beginning, and one we will undertake with hope. Hope, firstly, because 12 months into restrictions, there is now realistic expectation of lockdown loosening. But above all, Hope because we trust in God, and God is the source of all our hope. Looking to the future, a reading of hope from the second letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. So we do not lose hope. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Hi, I'm Hannah Taylor, part of the Marie Curie team in Greater Manchester. It was important to us at Marie Curie to mark today with a day of reflection because of the millions of people bereaved since the pandemic began, with many unable to say goodbye to loved ones or grieve properly. We're delighted over 250 organisations are supporting this day. As a charity, we know how important it is for people to grieve. Marie Curie has been supporting bereaved people as well as caring for dying people with and without coronavirus throughout the pandemic. We know that many people will have missed the opportunity to come together for all sorts of reasons, but in particular through their grief. Today's National Day of Reflection gives us the opportunity to support each other, even from a distance. We hope today will show those of you who are bereaved that we are all here for you if you need to reach out to talk. We know you're still grieving and that not being able to say goodbye properly will have had an impact on you emotionally and psychologically. And we want to connect and support each other today and in the months and years to come. Today is a day for us to come together, to reflect on our collective loss, support the millions who've been bereaved and hope for a brighter future. Thanks for joining us. If you're struggling with grief or need support, you can find free bereavement resources and a list of organisations that can help. Search National Day of Reflection online. A candle of hope. Eternal God, who made this world shine with the brightness of your one true light, set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have lit a candle to remember those whom we have lost in this pandemic. We have also lit our second candle of hope as we look to the future with faith and confidence. I want to thank you for joining us here in this cathedral with our interfaith colleagues to remember and to mark the first anniversary of the lockdown in this pandemic. And now I invite you to join with us in this city and beyond as we mark a minute's silence to remember those whom we have lost. Thank you so much for joining us.